Hello everyone and welcome to my uncomfortably lit room. That way I can pretend that I am radiant and that my nose almost doesn't exist. But seriously, this is my streaming lighting. I just didn't bother adjusting it because whenever I adjust the camera, shutter speed also kind of adjusts and then you can start seeing lines on the camera screen. I know that it's not the best. But it will have to do. It's not that uncomfortable. So the topic of today is the fact that a lot of people that are new to spirituality will over personify spirits. The kind of questions that they tend to ask tend to make it very obvious that they're perceiving a spirit the same way as you would a person. As in a person that would have like a rank and position, a sex and gender, has limited ability and limited time to be at any kind of one place at the same time. A person that subscribes to a specific moral code and that does things out of spite or anger or expresses themselves through deep emotions. And that's just not how spirituality be, but it is the kind of traits that we recognize because, of course, we express through said traits. We require names and faces and time slots because we do have time and we're material and we tend to be born into a body that tends to have a sex and we tend to have a preferred gender on top of that sex. We function in a very enclosed and specific mode of operation and therefore we are used to the expressions of those specific modes of operation and when you ever encounter something that's outside of that it becomes very very difficult to conceptualize so a lot of people just don't, don't try they just operate with the mode of operation that's comfortable to them and there's nothing wrong with that, except that it produces the kind of questions that are... Well, neither here nor there when it comes to a spirit. So let's let's start from ranks, because you know how like demons have ranks? I, I keep on getting questions about, you know, oh, where do you get the information that the ranks actually represent planetary intelligences? Well, this is um, The Lesser Key of Solomon. It's a very popular book, but this translation is specifically by S.L. McGregor Mathers and Aleister Crowley. It was first released in 1904. And if we go to page 43, well, at least it's page 43 on my book. Either way, it's under observations. The do start listing the seals of the 72 kings are to be made in metals. The chief kings in Sol, gold. Marquises in Luna, silver. Dukes in Venus, copper. Prelacies, princes, in Jupiter, tin. Knights in Saturn, lead. Presidents in Mercury, mercury. Earls in Venus, copper, and Luna, silver. But then if you go to the next page, they go... Note, and let's just find the specific note, probably the seals of Earl should be made of iron and those of presidents in mixture of either copper and silver or of silver and mercury, as otherwise the metal of one planet, Mars, is excluded from the list. These two champs about a hundred years ago have decoded that, well, the titles aren't really titles, they were probably placed as titles, whoever was writing the book that gave spirits titles the first time, because that is what the whole system of rulership was based in the country that the person was at. Because I do remember somebody like commented that it is very close to like French way of operation like a long time ago, but that that's just like the regular medieval way of operation in most countries anyway. Well, like, you would, you know, have, like, kings and princes and dukes and earls and all of those, like, other big titles. So the titles are... You, you really shouldn't be, like, imagining an actual person 
that is a king that sits at a throne and rules a country, you should know that that title just means a planetary association, and then you can work through that with astrology, you can work with that with associations, like sun and gold is an association. You can use the associations of the planet in order to bring it into your practice, in order to get yourself closer to that like very specific intelligence. That is normally how it is used. It's so another bit of humanization and like personification that appears quite often on the subreddits that I moderate. I moderate demonolatry practices, demons and black magic. Not alone, of course. I have a mod team in all of these. So it's not just on me. If it was on me, it would be quite a lot of work. It's people complaining that there aren't female demons inside the Goetia with questions like, Goetia, where are the demonic princesses? Or why most demons are perceived as male? Or is it not odd that all 72 demons of the Goetia are male? Well, the time when this book would have been written, not, not like just translated, but written, the base way of identifying a spirit, an angel, be it a demon or whatever, would be a he. Um, the same way that if you're referring to human, like as a species, there's the human, you know, it's, it's a, it defaults to a he. We currently now would use a they, but when these books were written, they didn't use a they, they used a he as like the default. So it's just the default way of calling a spirit more than it's actually indicative of whether the spirit is male or female, because every spirit outside of very few spirits that tend to present only in one way or one way in particular, like, for example, Lilith mostly only presents as female. Most spirits are very fluid. So they don't just present as like one gender. You're effectively trying to gender a cube or a circle or a cloud. We need appearances. We're used to appearances and we're used to gender and sex being like a baked in thing. But Remember, you're not talking about a person. And the way that the spirits get perceived will over time kind of influence how people are referring to them in our, well, community or society, what have you. For example, normally people will write Hail Duchess Bune or one month after Duchess Gremory's ritual because those spirits tend to be perceived as female more than they do as male, but that doesn't mean that some people would not still perceive them as male, because once again, it's just a unique thing to your brain. It isn't... They don't come with like a preset sex or gender. That is a people thing. They're not people. And that... That is one of the things that tends to get like so hard for so many people because it's very hard to imagine something that is quite alien to you and we want to relate. So we want to humanize and we want to personify and it's just a very shallow attitude to carry through like majority of your practice. So it's better not to, but I feel like if anyone practices for long enough, they kind of gonna learn that alienness, that otherness, and that difference over time anyway, so I don't, I don't tend to, like, go around telling that to new people, like, you don't, you don't want to bring information that the person would obviously not, like, find useful, because they're not there, and they're not, they're not at that point in their practice. So it's not that there's 
isn't like duchesses or princesses. It's that you shouldn't be imagining like a prince and a princess, Dutch and a duke and a duchess, like a king and a queen. The titles don't mean what they what you think they mean, and there isn't really a such duality that like you know th this is a woman and she's coupled with this man and like they're having like an actual relationship that is a people thing it is not necessarily a spirit thing if you want to like imagine the spirit i would say that the best way to do it is to think of a spirit as a sea or a cloud or some other part of nature that you can conceptualize for yourself because it makes it easier for you but it doesn't necessarily remind you of you in particular. Now the, the last bit that we need to talk about here is morality and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and expand on the idea of the sea first because I feel like a lot of people don't get it. So imagine that there is a sea of consciousness outside of time and space. I'm going to like call this your spirit, like w whatever your spirit is. Um, doesn't matter. It's like Lucifer or Poseidon or Beelzebub or anything that you would want to call a spirit, like whatever spirit you, you're working with. And imagine that you're like the size of a drop. And the spirit can just like split because it's water. Water can split as much as it needs to. And it can send down the drop to communicate with you. It can be your drop. It's, it's your connection to the sea through that one drop. The sea has a lot of drops. More drops than you could feasibly ever consume by splitting the sea and sending out those droplets, but the drop, while being personal, is not necessarily like you, because the drop can go back to the sea and it can reintegrate nicely, because it's one big body of water. And as such, the sea can have many drops doing many things at the same time, and on top of that, the sea is not affected by time whatsoever because you're affected by time. The sea is outside of time. There isn't time where the sea is. It can, it can interface with you 10 years before, 10 years after, or 100 years before, 100 years after. It can see the whole of time at the same time. It can touch any bit of it. That's, that's a good way of conceptualizing a spirit. And I feel like if you can do that, it will break your mind a little. So, um, you know, get there naturally. But that kind of solves the, well, if I am communicating with this spirit and another person's communicating with this spirit, how is that spirit two places at the same time? Or... If that person sees the spirit as female, why do I see the spirit as male? Surely that makes it not the same spirit. Or surely the spirit has to like have specific feelings and holding petty grudges and malice or being married to other spirits. There are obviously couples in mythology because once again, it's kind of a good thing it represents our own, you know, societal standards. We tend to create families. It is a very way, it is a way of being very personal with the spiritual, but you have to remember that the spirits are not like you and me. They're not people. And too many people fall into the hole of thinking that they're people. And then the questions that come up for them only come up because they're thinking that they're people or even worse, they fall down like the rabbit hole of like jealousy. I've seen posts of that person that I don't like 
works with the same spirit as I do. And I don't like that person. But we still work with the same spirit. And because I don't like that person, I said that the spirit can't work with that person anymore. And because that did not impact their practice, I hate the spirit now. How dare it betray me? It's like, it's like trying to make sure that another person can't drink from the same river as you. That's very petty and nearly impossible. Like you would, it would probably be easier for you to stop the other person from drinking from a river than having a spirituality. It would be, you can probably poison a whole river, like just cause a complete ecosystem disaster, or you can dam the river. You can't really do that with the spiritual. So it's about as useful as fighting windmills. And the only way that people fall down these kind of moral dilemmas, these kind of ideas and these kind of emotions is when they over personify the spirits and they don't see it as a force of nature. They see it as a guy. So once again, this is why this video is being made. The last bit is a morality. I'm going to read you a post and I have blacked out the name of the person and posted it. This isn't like a critique of the post. It's perfectly fine to make posts like these. It's perfectly fine to make like posts of all of the posts that I had shown before. It's people asking questions because they're new to the practice or they're like arriving at their own personal conundrums. That's a good thing. Like questions should be asked. It's just that I've seen a pattern. I need something to illustrate it. So I take like specific topic postings and then like I compile it and I show it on a video. This doesn't mean that we're laughing at the person, okay? This doesn't mean that we're like critiquing the person for asking a question. So questions on demons and evil. I think it's fair to say that most demon altars believe their demons are just deeply misunderstood spirits who have been appropriated by Abrahamic religion and are actually very keen on helping and invest in, invested in people. I obviously agree, or I wouldn't visit the sub every day. At the same time, I feel like we possible try and sanitize them too much. Do not accuse me of believing that fictional depictions reflect real demons here. I am just saying to that to make a point. Hell of a boss's Asmodeus is, of course, a super sexual, but he also emphasizes consent and prioritizes his partner's comfort above all else. He's basically a representation of the 2010 sex positivity movement. And I just feel like that's how most demon alters see most demons. The worst things people talk about demons doing is putting devotees in admittedly sometimes very difficult circumstances, but always for the greater good and being blunt or rude. I'm experimenting with a novel method of divination and if my results reflect reality, at this point, I'm really skeptical, but you never know. They're actually much rougher and more offensive than people seem to think that they are. I just feel like they think modern standards of morality are irrelevant, since they are obviously extremely old, after all, and exist above them, which would probably mean that they do and feel things that we as demon alters would actually see as being morally wrong. Again, I'm in no way saying that Abrahamic religion represents them accurately. And I'm not discouraged in my practice. I'm just saying that maybe we swung the pendulum too far in the other direction. And that is, that is true. Like a lot of people, when they enter and they interact with a spirit in a positive manner, they get very defensive about any kind of uncomfortable parts of the spirit. And they go, well, I don't believe that that could ever happen. Not my spirit, <laughs> not my friends, <laughs> not my family. But I mean, some of these spirits are like personifications of very harsh um, currents. Like the spirit that's described as causing earthquakes, it's effectively a personification of earthquake in itself. 
And sometimes you need your world a bit, you know, figuratively shaken up in order for you to go out and figure things out. Hopefully not literally. You wouldn't literally want to shake up your own world. But in the end, are you are you personifying an earthquake and are judging the earthquake to having quaked? Like, do you go, oh, bad earthquake, how dare you quake on my city and not somewhere else? Don't you know where to quake? Where it's okay to quake and where it's not okay to quake? Earthquakes will quake where there's, like, fault lines <laughs> in the earth, you know? They will quake where they will quake, and they will quake when they will quake. It is pointless being angry with nature. So when you're personifying what is effectively a very natural current that is kind of contradictory to living well and enjoying life, and you're then using said current in like a positive way in your own life, and then get like super defensive that, oh, my earthquake would never quake there. <laughs> Girl, you're working with the power of the earthquake. It's gonna quake where it's gonna quake, you know? It's a it's a natural force. It's not a person that has strong desires. The rain does not hate you. It does not want to, like, shit on your house in particular. The rain just rains sometimes. That is, that is how nature works. And part of the natural world is that all parts of it kind of make up the whole. So when you start like personifying like Lilith is a force of failed reproduction, death and childbirth, um, sudden infant death syndrome, like babies that just died, she is a personification with some very, very heavy currents. He's part of those currents. You can't just say, oh, not my Lilith. My Lilith would just empower me. She is a very good force. The force is immoral. Um, it's a force. It's part of nature. Um, we as people might one day arrive at a point where we have zero mortality rate in births, where we have zero mortality rate in, you know, babies dying and that sort of thing. But... It's still going to happen in nature and they're still going to have like dogs with failed litters or whales with failed conception. And it's still going to be part of the past. It's, it's not part of life that you can just erase by not looking at it. So parts of the left hand path sometimes include looking at areas that are very uncomfortable and Part of the beings that are judged to be demons sometimes, surprise, reside over areas that are judged to be very uncomfortable for people to look at because it doesn't, you know, lift and help our lives. It's not just puppies and rainbows. And of course, once again, you can use that to your benefit, like a woman wanting abortion and not wanting kids is likely gonna see the demon of no kids as a positive force on their life because that is their choice. Um, a person that needs a shake-up <laughs> might see the force of an earthquake not literally but figuratively shaking up their life as a positive force, right? But it's still the force of an earthquake. You know, you gotta, you gotta Keep that in mind. So moralizing a demon or a god or an angel is a bit like moralizing a cloud. You just, you wouldn't. It's, cloud's not like you and you're not like a cloud. And that is okay because that is how nature works. I hope that I have enlightened every single one of you a little bit on the subject. If you have any kind of questions, please ask them down below. I will surely try to help you. My opinions are mostly my own. Like, 
I really don't like how my hair looks today, so I don't know how to wear my hood. Whether I want a hood up or I want to put a, or whether I want a hood down. There we go. We can. We managed to finish that sentence. Nice mouth. Um, the opinions that I represent here are mostly my own. They will have a high degree of sentiment agreeing with me in the communities that I run in. Because a lot of people end up sort of thinking about it similarly over some amount of time. But they are, in the end, my own. You are free to disagree if you want. I know that some people do, and that's perfectly fine. However you approach spirituality is entirely up to you. I'm just saying that a lot of these questions come from a point of seeing a spirit as a guy, and that... It just kind of doesn't serve you in your practice and you're better off without it, but it's still up to you because you might prefer a more personal practice. And honestly, both views kind of don't contradict each other because um, if you understand that a spirit is just trying to interact with you the way that you would feel it being the most comfortable because, well, you're a person so what's most familiar to you is a person. It doesn't detract from them not being a person. Um, you don't like get this conflict of, oh, this is just for me, like rejoice. You know, you get to interact in a way that's familiar to you. And whenever you want to experience something that isn't familiar, you can push in the alien direction and, you know, experience a different point of view and that might broaden your horizons as long as of course you're prepared to have your horizons broadened and don't just like suddenly freak out at the idea of seeing a spirit as a cloud because some people do then it's not very useful so anyway i have rambled for long enough if you like this video please do give me a like Subscribe only if you want to see a cult and gameplay, because I'm sorry, your subscription feed is going to be spammed by both. Partitioning your channels into, like, very specific categories is mostly for, like, channels that are so big that they can have a YouTube representative, because then you have a system to do it. Otherwise, you would need to, like, have a separate email address, have a separate Google account, and then that channel might never, like, bypass um, the restrictions on uploads. Like, you might never get enough people to have uploads as long as you want to have them. So I found that the easiest solution is for me to just put everything that I do on one channel, which makes this channel a bit disjointed. Because once again, I do both gameplay and I do occult videos, so yeah, you get to have game rants and occult in one place. Sorry about that. Sometimes something else random. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you do like all of that, then do subscribe. If you don't, that's okay. Engagement with the video is always appreciated, and please tell me what you think. So. Yeah, hopefully I'm going to see you in my other videos sometime, hopefully soon, and see you for now. Doodaloo.